Uh, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you for joining us for our weekend weather update and the outlook for next week, recorded on Friday, May the 10th. Well, it's been a big frosty morning around the country, even where I am in Auckland, there was a bit of ice on the cars outside. Uh, a windy southerly though kicking into Auckland and northern areas where it was pretty cold, the coldest morning of the year in many parts of New Zealand uh, today, except some of you in the south here already noticed that it was a little bit warmer. In fact, we did a, a mes message on social media this morning on X uh, talking about how Auckland was colder than Southland. Now, there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, it takes about 24 hours for a cold change in the South Island to reach the top of the country. So quite often when there is a cold front coming in, it's another 24 hours before those in the north actually feel it. The other part of it is the airflow coming into Southland and southern parts of New Zealand is now coming out more directly of Australia. And so even though it's all a southerly kind of flow, uh, basically the closer this high pressure zone moves in, the milder that southerly becomes. And so that's the reason why some parts of the south weren't so cold this morning. In fact, double digits in some areas down here, whereas it was frosty all the way up to the southern parts of Auckland. Let's have a look at the satellite map. So here we are uh, tonight. This is midnight tonight. High pressure, which we've been looking at for two weeks now, centered just south of Tasmania, and we've got the southerly flow. Let's animate the weekend, and you'll see the high very slowly starts to move into New Zealand, and by uh, the early hours of Monday morning, the high is basically moving in and across the country, and so lighter winds. But there is a bit of cloud and some showers trapped underneath it. So for some of you in the west, the sunniest weather you've got is right now with the southerly that we've got. The minute it turns around to a southwesterly, the cloud comes back to many western areas. Precipitation wise, well, we've got that southerly blowing through and the offshore low, so that's producing a bit of rain anywhere between uh, about Wairoa, Nuhaka, Mahia, and the, you're going to get about 10 to 15 millimetres in that area. Elsewhere, just a few showers, and again, that southerly driving in a few showers to the deep south. Frosts are still around. Now, these frost maps and graphs are all free, and they're all available on our new app. So if you download our new app, you can see the frost risk maps, and you can then pick out your individual area. This is Hamilton, showing a high risk of a frost for you on Sunday morning. So the frost risk, it goes right up to Waikato again on Friday, uh, sorry, Saturday morning, and on Sunday, still into Waikato, but retreating a little bit in some areas, but I still think frosty conditions are possible. Notice the south, not quite as frosty because there's a little bit more of a breeze coming in for you. So this is how it looks on Saturday. Now these rain maps are a little different to the ones we normally show you. Uh, we use these for the Australian updates because it shows 24 hours of rainfall, whereas the normal ones we show you just show whatever is happening at lunchtime. So the map itself is for midday, showing where the air pressure will be, but the rain that you see shows all of the 24 hours leading up to that point. And so uh, pale blue means there's not much, it means the risk of a, a shower or two, and you can really see the rain shadow effect that the South Island, the Southern Alps, and the ranges around the North Island produce. All these areas here dry, many of them like Waikato and Auckland, Bay of Plenty will be very sunny, but on the eastern side, you can see that wet weather clipping the northern part of Hawke's Bay and Gisborne, and a few showers also coming around the coastal fringes of the south and the east of the South Island. Temperatures on Saturday, uh, again, forget the place names, just focus on the numbers. It shows you inland areas like Queenstown and coastal areas like Dunedin being fairly similar, thanks to that breeze blowing through. And you go further up the country, it's a little milder, but generally speaking, uh, temperatures are pretty even across New Zealand as we go through Saturday. To look at your local ones, use our app or our websites. Here we are on Sunday, again showing 24 hours of rainfall, and most places are dry. You know, you can see a big dry spot across the country. The Southern Alps, again, blocking a lot of that wet weather, but the showers are out at sea. And the reason why this is interesting is because as we go through Sunday, that cloud, obviously showers need cloud, cloud will be moving in. And uh, that means western areas will become cloudy as the day wears on. And by the time we get to Monday, the high might be over the top of you, but we've got a different setup with the cloud. This is the reason why I know a lot of you go to MetView and a lot of you use the Met Service, those air pressure charts, MSLP. Um, the, de the thing they don't show you is wet weather like this. So you see a big, beautiful high and you think it's going to be lovely and sunny like uh, we've been seeing in many places this week. But instead, Monday could be cloudy with a few showers around that western side. And now the eastern side of the country starts to get the sun back out again as that westerly flow, very light one, starts to move in. 
Now by Tuesday, the high has already crossed past the country. This has been with us for two weeks by the time it gets to that point. And finally, over here around Australia in the southeastern corner, they've got a bit of a change coming in. But we're going to be looking at this low out here in the Tasman Sea because as we get to Wednesday, the high here moving further away, windy westerlies back from Tasmania right across the South Island, uh, really autumnal kind of weather where you get these windy westerlies again. But up in the north, subtropical winds starting to come down. Wednesday will be mild and we've got this low to keep an eye on. So by Thursday, does it move in or does it stay offshore? We've got two high pressure zones, one out here in the Tasman, the other one, that big one, finally moving out to the east. So it depends on the movement of those two highs. The low is trapped in between the two of them. And so if the highs get a little closer, that low might get pushed further north. If the highs spread out a little further, then the low could come further down. So basically that rain could move further down the country, but for now it looks like just the top. And the pale blue, again, just showers. Showers again down here are a little bit of patchy rain. The heaviest rain is in the yellows and the greens. So by Friday, next week, one week from now, that low is pretty weak, dominated by high pressure in the New Zealand area, but I wouldn't 100% lock this in just yet. This could still move north or south, worth keeping an eye on, uh, but for the most part, high pressure is certainly dominating our weather. Here is the seven day rainfall. So you can see that low pressure zone in the north moving in here and crossing to the north of the country. Rainfall in it, very patchy, very messy because the low itself struggling to, to get going. So you can see over here places like Sydney getting 200 millimetres, uh, some parts offshore getting 100 to 150, 100 millimetres there. So there's a fine line between that line of rain and the mostly dry weather elsewhere. Basically no rain for parts of Canterbury, Nelson, Marlborough, uh, Whanganui, Manawatu areas, all could be seen mostly if not completely dry weather. But on the outer edges, we do have a bit of rain around. There we go. That is it. Hopefully we get a bit of a change after this big high pressure zone. I mean, the, for those who've got the sun, it is lovely to get it at this time of the year. But there are a number of regions, believe it or not, that need quite a lot of rain. We could do with a couple of really wet days and then a week later, another lot of wet weather. Then it can go back to sunny and dry. And then we'll sh we should be a lot better off going into the winter for our farmers and growers. That, and for the people on rainwater tanks as well. That is all from me. Thanks for all the comments on YouTube. We read every single one of them, even if we don't have the time to write back to every one of you. Thank you so much for all the amazing support. We certainly need it at the moment. It's tough out there uh, for us as it is for many of you. Have a good weekend. We'll see you on Monday.